The Cena Monday Theatre Company presents from the Plays to Listen to series Antigone by Sophocles Translated from the original Greek text by Robert Fagels Starring Anna Buckland as Antigone Rupert Bates as Creon Faye Morn as Ismene Martin Prest as leader and chorus David J. Keogh as chorus Isaac Dayton as Messenger and Heyman, Will Bridges as Sentry and Tiresias, Cecilia Dorland as Eurydice. Sound design and music by Will Bridges, directed by Cecilia Dorland. My own flesh and blood, dear sister, dear Ismene, how many griefs our father Oedipus handed down? Do you know one? I ask you one grief that Zeus will not perfect for the two of us while we still live and breathe. There's nothing, no pain. Our lives are pain. No private shame, no public disgrace. Nothing I haven't seen in your griefs and mine. And now this, an emergency decree, they say the commander, has just now declared for all of Thebes. What? Haven't you heard? Don't you see? The doom reserved for enemies marches on the ones we love the most. Not I. I haven't heard a word, Antigone. Nothing of loved ones. No joy or pain has come my way, not since the two of us were robbed of our two brothers, both gone in a day, a double blow. Not since the armies of Argos vanished just this very night. I know nothing more, whether our luck's improved or ruin still to come. I thought so. That's why I brought you out here, past the gates, so you could hear in private. What's the matter? Trouble, clearly. You sound so dark, so grim. Why not? Our own brother's burial. Hasn't Creon graced one with all the rights, disgraced the other? Eteocles, they say, has been given full military honours. Rightly so. Creon has laid him in the earth and he goes with glory down among the dead. But the body of Polynices, who died miserably, why, a citywide proclamation, rumour has it, forbids anyone to bury him, even mourn him. He's to be left unwept unburied, a lovely treasure for birds that scan the field and feast to their heart's content. Such I hear is the martial law our good Creon lays down for you and me. Yes, me, I tell you. And he's coming here to alert the uninformed in no uncertain terms, and he won't treat the matter lightly. Whoever disobeys in the least will die. His doom is sealed, stoning to death inside the city walls. There, you have it. You'll soon show what you are. Worth your breeding is meaning, or a coward for all your royal blood. My poor sister, if things have come to this, who am I to make or mend them? Tell me, what good am I to you? Decide. Will you share the labour? Share the work? What work? What's the risk? What do you mean? Will you lift up his body with these bare hands and lower it with me? What? You'd bury him when a law forbids the city? Yes! He is my brother and deny it as you will, your brother too. No one will ever convict me for a traitor. So desperate, and Creon has expressly... No, he has no right to keep me from my own. Oh, my sister, think! Think how our own father died, hated, his reputation in ruins, driven on by the crimes he brought to light himself, to gouge out his eyes with his own hands. Then mother, his mother and wife, both in one, mutilating her life in the twisted noose. And last, our two brothers, dead in a single day, both shedding their own blood, poor suffering boys, battling out their common destiny hand to hand. Now look at the two of us, left so alone. Think what a death we'll die. 
the worst of all if we violate the laws and override the fixed decree of the throne, its power. We must be sensible. Remember, we are women. We're not born to contend with men. Then, too, we're underlings, ruled by much stronger hands. So we must submit in this, and things still worse. I, for one, I... I'll beg the dead to forgive me. I'm forced. I have no choice. I must obey the ones who stand in power. Why rush to extremes? It's madness. Madness. I won't insist. No. Even if you should have a change of heart, I'd never welcome you in the labour. Not with me. So, do as you like. Whatever suits you best. I will bury him myself. And even if I die in the act, that death will be a glory. I will lie with the one I love and loved by him. An outrage sacred to the gods. I have longer to please the dead than please the living here. In the kingdom down below, I'll lie forever. Do as you like. Dishonour the laws the gods hold in honour. I'd do them no dishonour, but defy the city? I have no strength for that. You have your excuses. I am on my way. I will raise a mound for him, for my dear brother. Oh, Antigone, you are so rash. I'm so afraid for you. Don't fear for me. Set your own life in order. Then don't, at least, blurt this out to anyone. Keep it a secret. I'll join you in that, I promise. Dear God, shout it from the rooftops. I'll hate you all the more for silence. Tell the world! Oh, so fiery, and it ought to chill your heart. I know I please where I must please the most. Yes, if you can, but you're in love with impossibility. Very well then, once my strength gives out, I will be done at last. You're wrong from the start. You're off on a hopeless quest. If you say so, you will make me hate you. And the hatred of the dead by all rights will haunt you night and day. But leave me to my own absurdity. Leave me to suffer this dreadful thing. I will suffer nothing as great as death without glory. Then go, if you must. But rest assured, wild, irrational as you are, my sister, you are truly dear to the ones who love you. Glory! Glory! Great beam of the sun, brightest of all that ever rose on the seven gates of Thebes, you burn through night at last. Great eye of the golden day. Mounting the Dersey's banks, you throw him back. The enemy out of Argos, the white shield, the man of bronze, he's flying headlong now, the bridle of fate stampeding him with pain. And he had driven against our borders, launched by the warring claims of Polynices like an eagle, screaming, winging havoc over the land, wings of armour shielded white as snow, a huge army massing, crested helmets bristling for assault. He hovered above our roofs, his vast moor gaping, closing down around our seven gates, his spears thirsting for the kill. But now he's gone. Look, before he could glut his jaws with Theban blood, or the god of fire put our crown of towers to the torch, he grappled the dragon, none can master. Thebes, the clang of our arms like thunder at his back. Zeus hates with a vengeance all bravado, the mighty boasts of men. <laughs> he watched them coming on in a rising flood, the pride of their golden armor ringing shrill and brandishing his lightning, blasted the fighter just at the goal, rushing to shout his triumph from our walls. Down from the heights he crashed, pounding down on the earth. And a moment ago, blazing torch in hand, mad for attack, ecstatic, he 
breathed his rage, the storm of his fury hurling at our heads. But now his high hopes have laid him low, and down the enemy ranks the iron god of war deals his rewards, his stunning blows. Ares, rapture of battle, our right arm in the crisis! Seven captains marshalled at seven gates, seven against their equals gave the brazen trophies up to Zeus, god of the breaking rout of battle, all but two. Those blood brothers, one father, one mother, matched in rage, spears matched for the twin conquest, clashed and won the common prize of death. But now for victory! victory! Glorious in the morning, joy in her eyes to meet our joy. She is winging down to Thebes, our fleets of chariots wheeling in her wake. Now let us win oblivion from the wars, thronging the temples of the gods in singing, dancing choirs through the night. Lord Dionysus! God of the dance that shakes the land of Thebes, now lead the way. But look, the king of the realm is coming. Creon, the new man for the new day. Whatever the gods are sending now. What new plan will he launch? Why this, this special session? Why this sudden call to the old men, summoned at one command? My countrymen, the ship of state is safe. The gods who rocked her after a long, merciless pounding in the storm have righted her once more. Out of the whole city, I have called you here alone. Well, I know, first, your undeviating respect for the throne and royal power of King Laius. Next, while Oedipus steered the land of Thebes, and even after he died, your loyalty was unshakable. You still stood by their children. Now then, since the two sons are dead, two blows of fate in the same day, cut down by each other's hands, both killers, both brothers stained with blood. As I am next in kin to the dead, I now possess the throne and all its powers. Of course, you cannot know a man completely, his character, his principles, sense of judgment, not till he's shown his colors, ruling the people, making laws. Experience, there's the test. As I see it, whoever assumes the task, the awesome task of setting the city's course and refuses to adopt the soundest policies, but fearing someone keeps his lips locked tight, he's utterly worthless. So I rate him now. I always have. And whoever places a friend above the good of his own country, he is nothing. I have no use for him. Zeus, my witness, Zeus who sees all things always. I could never stand by silent, watching destruction march against our city, putting safety to rout. Nor could I ever make that man a friend of mine who menaces our country. Remember this, our country is our safety. Only while she voyages true on course can we establish friendships truer than blood itself. Such are my standards. They make our city great. Closely akin to them, I have proclaimed just now the following decree to our people concerning the two sons of Oedipus. Eteocles, who died fighting for Thebes, excelling all in arms, he shall be buried, crowned with a hero's honors, the cups we pour to soak the earth and reach the famous dead. But as for his blood brother, Polynices, 
who returned from exile home to his father city and the gods of his race consumed with one desire to burn them roof to roots who thirsted to drink his kinsman's blood and sell the rest to slavery that man a proclamation has forbidden the city to dignify him with burial mourn him at all no he must be left unburied his corpse carrion for the birds and dogs to tear an obscenity for the citizens to behold these are my principles never at my hands will the traitor be honored above the patriot but whoever proves his loyalty to the state i'll prize that man in death as well as life this is your pleasure creon treating our city's enemy and our friend this way the power is yours i suppose to enforce it with the laws both for the dead and all of us the living follow my orders closely then be on your guard we are too old lay that burden on younger shoulders no 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 i don't mean the body i've posted guards already what commands for us then what other service see that you never side with those who break my orders never only a fool could be in love with death death is the price you're right but all too often the mere hope of money has ruined many men my lord I can't say I'm winded from running or, or set out with any spring in my legs either. No, sir, I was lost in thought and it made me stop often, dead in my tracks, wheeling, turning back, and all the time a voice inside me muttering, idiot, why? You're going straight to your death. Then muttering, stopped again, you poor fool. If someone gets the news to Creon first, what's to save your neck? And so, mulling it over, on, on I trudged, dragging my feet. You, you could make a short road take forever. But at last, look, common sense won out. I'm here, I'm all yours. And even though I come empty handed, I'll tell my story just the same because I've come with a good grip on one hope. What will come, will come. Whatever fate- Come uh, to the point. What's wrong? Why so afraid? First, myself, I've got to tell you, I didn't do it. Didn't see who did. Be fair, don't take it out on me. You're playing it safe, soldier. Barricading yourself from any trouble. It's obvious you've something strange to tell. Dangerous too. And danger makes you delay for all your worth. Out with it! And then dismiss. All right, here it comes. The body. Someone's just buried it and then run off. Sprinkled some dry dust on the flesh, giving it proper rights. What? What man alive? I what have dare? no idea. I swear it. There was no mark of a spade, no pickaxe, pickaxe there. No earth turned up. The ground packed hard and dry, unbroken. No tracks, no wheel ruts, nothing. The workmen left no trace. Just at sunup, the first watch of the day points it out. It was a wonder. We were stunned. A terrific burden too for all of us. Listen, you can't see the corpse. Not that it's buried, really. It's just a light cover of road dust on it. As if someone meant to lay the dead to rest and keep from getting cursed. Not a sign that the dogs or wild beasts have worried the body, even torn the skin. But what came next? Rough talk flew thick and fast. Guard, grilling guard. We'd have come to blows at last, nothing to stop it. Each man for himself and each the culprit. No one caught red-handed, all of us plead in ignorance. Dodging the charges, ready to take up red-hot iron in our fists, go through fire, swear robes to the gods. Oh, I didn't do it, I had no hand in it either. Not in the plotting, not the work itself. And finally, after all this wrangling came to nothing, one man spoke out and made us stare at the ground, hanging our heads in fear. No way to counter him, no way to take his, his advice and come through safe and sound. Here's what he said. Look. We've got to report the facts to Creon. We can't keep this hidden. Well, that one out and the lot fell to me, condemned me, unlucky as ever. I got a prize. So here I am, 
against my will and yours too. Well, well, I know. No one wants the man who brings bad news. My king, ever since he began, I've been debating in my mind. Could this possibly be the work of the gods? Stop! Before you make me choke with anger, the gods? You, you're senile. Must you be insane? You, you say... It's intolerable. You say the gods could have the slightest concern for that corpse? Tell me, was it for meritorious service they proceeded to bury him, prized him so? The hero who came to burn their temples ringed with pillars, their golden treasures, scorch their hallowed earth and fling their laws to the winds? Exactly when did you last see the gods celebrating traitors? Inconceivable! No, from the first, there were certain citizens who could hardly stand the spirit of my regime, grumbling against me in the dark, heads together, tossing wildly, never keeping their necks beneath the yoke, loyally submitting to their king. These are the instigators, I'm convinced. They've perverted my own guard, bribed them to do their work. Money! Oh, nothing worse in our lives, so current, rampant, so corrupting. Money. You demolish cities, root men from their homes. You train and twist good minds and set them on to the most atrocious schemes. No limit. You make them adept at every kind of outrage, every godless crime. Money. Everyone. The whole crew bribed to commit this crime. They've made one thing sure, at least sooner or later, they will pay the price. And you, I swear to Zeus, as I still believe in Zeus, if you don't find the man who buried that corpse, the very man, and produce him before my eyes, simple death won't be enough for you. Not till we string you up alive and wring the immorality out of you. Then you can steal the rest of your days, better informed about where to make a killing. You'll have learned at last it doesn't pay to itch for rewards from every hand that beckons. Filthy prophets wreck most men. You'll see they'll never save your life. Please, please, may I say a word or two? Or just turn and go. Can't you tell? Everything you say offends me. Where does it hurt you? In the ears or in the heart? And who are you to pinpoint my displeasure? The culprit grates on your feelings. I just annoy your ears. Still talking. You talk too much. A born nuisance. Maybe so. But I never did this thing, so help me. Yes, you did. What's more, you squandered your life for silver. Oh, it's terrible when the one who does the judging judges things all wrong. Well, now, you just be clever about your judgments. If you fail to produce the criminals for me, you'll swear your dirty money brought you pain. Oh, I hope he's found. Best thing by far. But caught or not, that's in the lap of fortune. I'll never come back. You've seen the last of me. I'm saved even now. And oh, no, I never thought, I never hoped. Dear gods, I owe you all my thanks. Numberless wonders, terrible wonders walk the world, but none the match for man. That great wonder crossing the heaving grey sea, driven on by blasts of winter, or through breakers crashing left and right, holds his steady course, and the oldest of the gods he wears away. The earth, the immortal, the inexhaustible, as his plows go back and forth, year in, year out, with the breeds of stallions turning up the furrows. And the blithe, light-hearted race of birds he snares, the tribes of savage beasts, the life that swarms the depths, with one fling of his nets, woven and coiled tight, he takes them all. Man the skilled, the brilliant, he conquers all. 
taming with his techniques the prey that roams the cliffs and wild layers, training the stallion, clamping the yoke across his shaggy neck and the tireless mountain bull. And speech and thought quick as the wind and the mood, the mind for law that rules the city. All these he has taught himself and shelter from the arrows of the frost when there's rough lodging under a cold, clear sky and the shafts of lashing rain. Ready, resourceful man, never without resources, never in impasse as he marches on to the future, only death. From death alone he will find no rescue, but from desperate plagues he has plotted his escapes. Man the master, ingenious past all measure, past all dreams, the skills within his grasp, he forges on, now to destruction, now again to greatness, when he weaves in the laws of the land and the justice of the gods that bind his oaths together, he and his city rise high. But the city casts out that man who weds himself to inhumanity, thanks to reckless daring. Never share my hearth, never think my thoughts, whoever does such things. Here is a dark sign from the gods. What to make of this? I know her. How can I deny it? That young girl's Antigone. Wretched child of a wretched father, Oedipus. Look, is it possible? They bring you in like a prisoner. Why? Did you break the king's laws? Did they take you in some act of mad defiance? She's the one. She did it single-handed. We caught her burying the body. Where's Creon? Back again, just in time when you need him. In time for what? What is it? My king, there's nothing you can swear you'll never do. Second thoughts make liars of us all. I could have sworn I wouldn't hurry back. What with your threats, the buffeting I just took. But a stroke of luck beyond our wildest hopes. Oh, what a joy. There's nothing like it. So, back I've come, breaking my oath. Who cares? I'm bringing in our prisoner, this young girl. We took her, giving the dead the last rites. But no casting lots this time. This is my luck, my prize, no one else's. Now, my lord, here she is. Take her, question her, cross-examine her to your heart's content. But set me free. It's only right I'm rid of this dreadful business once and for all. Prisoner? Her? You took her? Where? Doing what? Burying the man. That's the whole story. What? You mean what you say? You're telling me the truth? She's the one. With my own eyes, I saw her bury the body. Just what you've forbidden. There. Is that plain and clear? What did you see? Did you catch her in the act? Here's what happened. We went back to our post. Those threats of yours breathing down our necks. We brushed the corpse clean of the dust that covered it, stripped it bare. Oh, it was slimy, going soft. We took to higher ground, backs to the wind, to, so the stink of him couldn't hit us. Jostling, baiting each other to keep awake, shouting back and forth. No napping on the job, not this time. And so the hours dragged by until the sun stood dead above our heads. A huge white ball in the noon sky, beating, blazing down. And then it happened. Suddenly, a whirlwind, twisting a great dust storm up from the earth, a black plague of the heavens, filling the plain, ripping the leaves off every tree in sight, choking the air and sky. We squinted hard and took our whipping from the gods. And after the storm passed, it seemed endless. There. We saw the girl. She cried out a sharp, piercing cry, like a bird come back to an empty nest, peering into its bed, and all the baby's gone. Just so, when she sees the corpse bear, she bursts into a long, shattering wail and calls down withering curses on the heads of all who did the work. And she scoops up dry dust, handfuls quickly, and lifting a fine bronze urn, lifting it high and pouring. 
she crowns the dead with three full libations. Well, as soon as we saw, we rushed her, closed in on the kill like hunters. And she, she didn't flinch. We interrogated her, charging her with the offences past and present. She stood up to it all, denied nothing. I tell you, it made me ache and laugh in the same breath. It's pure joy to escape the worst yourself. It hurts a man to bring down his friends. But all that, I'm afraid, means less to me than my own skin. That's just the way I'm made. You, with your eyes fixed on the ground, speak up. Do you deny you did this? Yes or no? I did it. I don't deny a thing. You get out wherever you please. You're clear of a very heavy charge. And you, tell me briefly, no long speeches? Were you aware a decree had forbidden this? Well aware. How could I avoid it? It was public. And still you had the gall to break this law? Of course I did. It wasn't Zeus, not in the least, who made this proclamation. Not to me. Nor did that justice, dwelling with the gods beneath the earth, ordain such laws for men. Nor did I think your edict had such force that you, a mere mortal, could override the gods, the great, unwritten, unshakable traditions. They are alive, not just today or yesterday. They live forever, from the first of time, and no one knows when they first saw the light. These laws, I was not about to break them not out of fear for some man's wounded pride and face the retribution of the gods. Die, I must. I've known it all my life. How could I keep from knowing? Even without your death sentence ringing in my ears. And if I am to die before my time, I consider that again. Who on earth, alive in the midst of so much grief as I, could fail to find his death a rich reward. So for me, at least, to meet this doom of yours is precious little pain. But if I had allowed my own mother's son to rot, an unburied corpse, that would have been an agony. This is nothing. And if my present actions strike you as foolish, let's just say, I've been accused of folly by a fool. Like father, like daughter, passionate, wild. She hasn't learnt to bend before adversity. No, believe me, the stiffest stubborn wills fall the hardest. The toughest iron, tempered strong in the white hot fire. You'll see it crack and shatter first of all. And I've known spirited horses you can break with a light bit. Proud, rebellious horses. There's no room for pride. Not in a slave. Not with the lord and master standing by. This girl was an old hand at insolence when she overrode the edicts we made public. But once she had done it, the insolence twice over, to glory in it, laughing, mocking us to our face with what she'd done. I am not the man. Not now. She is the man if this victory goes to her and she goes free. Never, sister's child, or closer in blood than all my family clustered at my altar, worshipping guardian Zeus. She'll never escape. She and her blood sister, the most barbaric death. Yes, I accuse her sister of an equal part in scheming this, this, this burial. Bring her here. I just saw her inside, hysterical, gone to pieces. It never fails. The mind convicts itself in advance when scoundrels are up to no good, plotting in the dark. Oh, but I hate it more when a traitor, caught red-handed, tries to glorify his crimes. Creon, what more do you want than my arrest and execution? Nothing. Then I have it all. Then why delay? Your moralizing repels me. Every word you say, pray God it always will. So naturally all I say repels you too. Enough! Give me glory! What greater glory could I win than to give my own brother decent burial? 
these citizens here would all agree. They would praise me too if their lips weren't locked in fear. Lucky tyrants, the perquisites of power, ruthless power to do and say whatever pleases them. You alone, of all the people in Thebes, see things that way. <laughs> they see it just that way, but defer to you and keep their tongues in leash. And you, aren't you ashamed to differ so from them, so disloyal? Not ashamed for a moment, not to honour my brother, my own flesh and blood. Wasn't Etiocles a brother too? Cut down, facing him. Brother, yes, by the same mother, the same father. Then how can you render his enemy such honours, such impieties in his eyes? He will never testify to that, Etiocles, dead and buried. He will, if you honour the traitor just as much as him. But it was his brother, not some slave that died. Ravaging our country! But Etiocles died fighting in our behalf. No matter, death longs for the same rights for all. Never the same for the patriot and the traitor. Who, Creon, who on earth can say the ones below don't find this pure and uncorrupt? Never. Once an enemy, never a friend, not even after death. I was born to join in love, not hate. That is my nature. Well, go down below and love. If love you must, love the dead. While I'm alive, no woman is going to lord it over me. Look, is Mene's coming, weeping a sister's tears, loving sister, under a cloud. Her face is flushed, her cheeks streaming. Sorrow puts her lovely radiance in the dark. You, in my own house, you viper, slinking undetected, sucking my lifeblood. I never knew I was breeding twin disasters. The two of you rising up against my throne. Come, tell me, will you confess your part in the crime or not? Answer me, swear to me. I did it. Yes, if only she consents, I share the guilt, the consequences too. No, justice will never suffer that. Not you, you were unwilling. I never brought you in. But now you face such dangers. I'm not ashamed to sail through trouble with you. Make your troubles mine. Who did the work? Let the dead and the God of death bear witness. I have no love for a friend who loves in words alone. Oh no, my sister, don't reject me, please. Let me die beside you, consecrating the dead together. Never share my dying. Don't lay claim to what you never touched. My death will be enough. What do I care for life cut off from you? <laughs> Ask Creon. Your concern is all for him. Why abuse me so? It doesn't help you now. You're right. If I mock you, I get no pleasure from it. Only pain. Tell me, dear one, what can I do to help you even now? Save yourself. I don't grudge you your survival. Oh no, no. Denied my portion in your death. You chose to live. I chose to die. Not at least without every kind of caution I could voice. Your wisdom appealed to one world, mine another. But look, we're both guilty, both condemned to death. Courage! Live your life! I gave myself to death long ago so I might serve the dead. They're both mad, I tell you, the two of them. One's just shown it and the other's been that way since she was born. True, my king. The sense we were born with cannot last forever. Commit cruelty on a person long enough and the mind begins to go. Yours did? when you chose to commit your crimes with her. How can I live alone without her? Her, don't even mention her. She no longer exists. What? You'd 
kill your own son's bride? Absolutely. There are other fields for him to plough. Perhaps, but never as true, as close a bond as theirs. A worthless woman for my son? It repels me. Dearest Haman, your father wrongs you so. Enough, enough! You and your talk of marriage. Creon, you're really going to rob your son of Antigone. Death will do it for me. Break their marriage off! So it's settled then. Antigone must die. Settled, yes. We both know that. Stop wasting time. Take them in. From now on, they'll act like women. Tie them up. No more running loose. Even the bravest will cut and run once they see death coming for their lives. Blessed. They are truly blessed who all their lives have never tasted devastation. For others, once the gods have rocked a house to its foundation, the ruins will never cease, cresting on and on from one generation on throughout the race, like a great mounting tide driven on by savage northern gales, surging over the dead black depths, rolling up from the bottom dark heaves of sand and the headlands, taking the storm's onslaught full force roar and the low moaning echo goes on and on. And now, as in ancient times, I see the sorrows of the house, the living heirs of the old ancestral kings, piling on the sorrows of the dead, and one generation cannot free the next. Some god will bring them crashing down. The race finds no release. And now, the light, the hope, springing up from the late last root in the house of Oedipus, that hopes cut down in turn by the long bloody knife swung by the gods of death, by a senseless word, by fury at the heart. Zeus, yours is the power. Zeus, what man on earth can override it? Who can hold it back? Power that neither sleep the all ensnaring, no nor the tireless months of heaven can ever overmaster. Young through all time, mighty Lord of power, you hold fast the dazzling crystal mansions of Olympus. And throughout the future, late and soon, as through the past, your law prevails. No towering form of greatness enters into the lives of mortals free and clear of ruin. True, our dreams, our high hopes voyaging far and wide, bring sheer delight to many, to many others delusion. Blithe, mindless lusts, and the fraud steals on one slowly, unaware till he trips and puts his foot in the fire. He was a wise old man who coined the famous expression, sooner or later, foul is fair, fair is foul, and to the man the gods will ruin. He goes his way for a moment only, free of blinding ruin. Here's Haman, now, the last of all your sons. Does he come in tears for his bride, his doomed bride, Antigone, bitter at being cheated of their marriage? We'll soon know better than seers could tell us. Son, you've heard the final verdict on your bride? Are you coming now, raving against your father? Or do you love me, no matter what I do? Father, I am your son. You, in your wisdom, set my bearings for me. I obey you. No marriage could ever mean more to me than you, whatever good direction you may offer. Fine, Haman. That's how you ought to feel within your heart, subordinate to your father's will in every way. That's what a man prays for, to produce good sons, a household full of them, dutiful and attentive, so they can pay his enemy back with the interest and match the respect their father shows his friend. But the man who rears a brood of useless children, what has he brought into the world, I ask you? Nothing but trouble for himself and mockery from his enemies laughing in his face. Oh, Haman, never lose your sense of judgment over a woman. The warmth, the rush of pleasure, 
it all goes cold in your arms. I warn you, a worthless woman in your house, a misery in your bed. What wound cuts deeper than a loved one turned against you? Spit her out like a mortal enemy. Let the girl go. Let her find a husband down among the dead. Imagine it. I caught her in naked rebellion, the traitor the only one in the whole city. I'm not about to prove myself a liar, not to my people. No, I'm going to kill her. That's right. So let her cry for mercy, sing her hymns to Zeus, who defends all bonds of kindred blood. Why, if I bring up my own kin to be rebels, think what I'd suffer from the world at large. Show me the man who rules his household well. I'll show you someone fit to rule the state. That good man, my son, I have every confidence he and he alone can give commands and take them too. Staunch in the storm of spears, he'll stand his ground, a loyal, unflinching comrade at your side. But whoever steps out of line violates the laws or presumes to hand out orders to his superiors. He'll win no praise from me. But that man the city places in authority, his orders must be obeyed, large and small, right and wrong. Anarchy! Show me a greater crime in all the earth. She, she destroys cities, rips up houses, breaks the ranks of spearmen into headlong rout. But the ones who last it out, the great mass of them owe their lives to discipline. Therefore, we must defend the men who live by law. Never let some woman triumph over us. Better to fall from power, if fall we must, at the hands of a man. Never be rated inferior to a woman. Never! To us, unless old age has robbed us of our wits, you seem to say what you have to say with sense. Father, only the gods endow a man with reason, the finest of all their gifts, a treasure. Far be it from me, I haven't the skill, and certainly no desire to tell you when, if ever, you make a slip in speech, though someone else might have a good suggestion. Of course, it's not for you in the normal run of things to watch whatever men say or do, or find to criticize. The man in the street, you know, who dreads your glance. He'd never say anything displeasing to your face, but it's for me to catch the murmurs in the dark, the way the city mourns for this young girl. No woman, they say, ever deserved death less and such a brutal death for such a glorious action. She, with her own dear brother lying in his blood, she can bear to leave him dead, unburied, food for the wild dogs or wheeling vultures. Death? She deserves a glowing crown of gold. So they say. And rumours spread in secret darkly. I rejoice in your success, father. Nothing more precious to me in the world. What medal of honour brighter to his children than a father's growing glory, or a child's to his proud father? Now don't, please, be quite so single-minded, self-involved, or assume the world is wrong and you are right. Whoever thinks that he alone possesses intelligence, the gift of eloquence, he and no one else and character too. Such men, I tell you, spread them open, you will find them empty. No, it's no disgrace for a man, even a wise man, to learn many things and not be too rigid. You've seen trees by a raging winter torrent. How many sway with the flood and salvage every twig, but not the stubborn. They're ripped out, roots and all. The same when a man is sailing. Haul your sheets too taut, never give an inch. You'll capsize and go the rest of the voyage, keel up and the rowing benches under. Oh, give way. 
relax your anger, change. I'm young, I know, but let me offer this. It would be best by far, I admit, if a man were born infallible, right by nature. If not, and things don't often go that way, it's best to learn from those with good advice. You do well, my lord, if he's speaking to the point, to learn from him, and you, my boy, from him. You are both talking sense. So, men our age, we're to be lectured, are we? Schooled by a boy his age. <laughs> Only in what is right, but if I seem young, look less to my years and more to what I do. Do? Is admiring rebels an achievement? I'd never suggest that you admire treason. Oh? Isn't that just the sickness that's attacked her? The whole city of Thebes denies it to a man. And is Thebes about to tell me how to rule? <laughs> Now you see, who's talking like a child? Am I to rule this land for others or myself? It's no city at all owned by one man alone. What? The city is the king's! That's the law! <laughs> what a splendid king you'd make of a desert island. You and you alone. This boy, I do believe, is fighting on her side. The woman's side. If you are a woman, yes, my concern is all for you. Why, you degenerate, bandying accusations, threatening me with justice, your own father? I see my father offending justice. Wrong. Wrong? To protect my royal rights? Protect your rights when you trample down the honors of the gods. You, you soul of corruption. Rotten through woman's accomplice. That may be, but you will never find me accomplice to a criminal. That's what she is! And every word you say is a blatant appeal for her! And you, and me, and the gods beneath the earth! You will never marry her! Not while she's alive! Then she will die, but her death will kill another. What? Reason threats you go too far. What threat? Combating your empty, mindless judgments with a word? You'll suffer for your sermons, you and your empty wisdom. If you weren't my father, I'd say you were insane. Don't flatter me with father, you woman slave. You really expect to fling abuse at me and not receive the same? Is that so? Now, by heaven. I promise you, you'll pay. Taunting, insulting me. Bring her out! That hateful... She'll die now, here, in front of his eyes, beside her groom. No! No. She will never die beside me. Don't delude yourself. And you will never see me. Never set eyes on my face again. Rage your heart out. Rage with friends who can stand the sight of you. Gone, my king, in a burst of anger. A temper young as his hurt him once. He may do something violent. Well, let him do it. Dream up something desperate. Past all human limit. Good riddance. Rest assured, he'll never save those two young girls from death. Both of them? You really intend to kill them both? No, not her. The, the one whose hands are clean. You're quite right. Uh, but Antigone, what sort of death do you have in mind for her? I will take her down some wild, desolate path never trod by men and wall her up alive in a rocky vault and set out short rations. Just the measure piety demands to keep the entire city free of defilement. There, let her pray to the one god she worships. Death! <laughs> Who knows? May just reprieve her from death. Or she may learn at last, better late than never, what a waste of breath it is to worship death! Love never conquered in battle. Love, the plunderer, laying waste the rich. 
love standing the night watch guarding a girl's soft cheek you range the seas the shepherd's steadings off in the wilds not even the deathless gods can flee your onset nothing human born for a day whoever feels your grip is driven mad love you wrench the minds of the righteous into outrage, swerve them to their ruin. You have ignited this, this kindred strife, father and son at war. And love alone the victor. Warm glance of the bride triumphant, burning with desire, throned in power, side by side with the mighty laws. Ah, oh, irresistible Aphrodite, never conquered. Love. Love, you mockers for your sport! <laughs> now, even I would rebel against the king. I would break all bounds when I see this. I fill with tears. I cannot hold them back, not any more. I see Antigone make her way to the bridal vault where all are laid to rest. Look at me. Men of my fatherland, setting out on the last road, looking into the last light of day, the last I will ever see. The god of death who puts us all to bed takes me down to the banks of Acheron alive, denied my part in the wedding songs. No wedding song in the dusk has crowned my marriage. I go to wed the lord of dark waters. Not crowned with a glory or with a dirge, you leave for the deep pit of the dead. No withering illness laid you low, no strokes of the sword, a law to yourself, alone. Alone, no mortal like you ever. You go down to the halls of death alive and breathing. But think of Niobe. Well, I know her story. Think what a living death she died. Tantalus daughter, stranger queen from the east. There on the mountain heights, growing stone, binding as ivy, slowly walled her round. And the rains will never cease. The legends say the snows will never leave her. Wasting away under her brows, the tears showering down her breasting ridge and slopes. A rocky death like hers puts me to sleep. But she was a god, born of gods, and we are only mortals born to die. And yet, of course, it's a great thing for a dying girl to hear, even to hear she shares a destiny equal to the gods during life and later, once she's dead. Oh, you mock me! Why, in the name of all my father's gods, why can't you wait till I am gone? Must you abuse me to my face? Oh, my city, all your fine, rich sons. And you, you, springs of the Dursey, holy grove of Thebes where the chariots gather, you, at least, you'll bear me witness. Look! Unmourned by friends and forced by such crude laws, I go to my rock-bound prison, strange new tomb, always a stranger. Oh, dear God, I have no home on earth and none below, not with the living, not with the breathless dead. You went too far, the last limits of Staring, smashing against the high throne of justice. Your life's in ruins, child. I wonder, do you pay for your father's terrible ordeal? There, at last you've touched it. The worst pain, the worst anguish. Raking up the grief for father three times over. All for the doom that struck us down. The brilliant house of Laius. Oh, mother. Your marriage bed, the coiling horrors, the coupling there. You with your own son, my father, doom-struck mother. Such, such were my parents and I their wretched child. I go to them now, cursed, unwed to share their home. I am a stranger, 
Oh, dear brother, doomed in your marriage. Your marriage murders mine. Your dying drags me down to death alive. Reverence asks some reverence in return, but attacks on power never go unchecked, not by the man who holds the reins of power. Your own blind will, your passion has destroyed you. No one to weep for me, my friends. No wedding song. They take me away in all my pain. The road lies open, waiting. Never again. The law forbids me to see the sacred eye of day. I am agony. No tears for the destiny that's mine. No loved one mourns my death. Can't you see? If a man could wail his own dirge before he dies, he'd never finish. Take her away quickly. Wall her up in the tomb. You have your orders. Abandon her there alone and let her choose death or a buried life with a good roof for shelter. As for myself, my hands are clean. This young girl, dead or alive, she will be stripped of her rights, her stranger's rights here in the world above. Oh, tomb, my bridal bed, my house, my prison, cut in the hollow rock, my everlasting watch. I'll soon be there, soon embrace my own, the great growing family of our dead. Persephone has received among her ghosts. I, the last of them all, the most reviled by far, go down before my destined times run out. But still... I go, cherishing one good hope. My arrival may be dear to father, dear to you, my mother, dear to you, my loving brother, Eteocles. When you died, I washed you with my hands. I dressed you all. I poured the sacred cups across your tombs. But now, Polynices, because I laid your body out as well, this this is my reward. Nevertheless, I honoured you. The decent will admit it. Well, and wisely too. Never, I tell you, if I had been the mother of children, or if my husband died exposed and rotting, I'd never have taken this ordeal upon myself, never defied our people's will. What law, you ask, do I satisfy with what I say? A husband dead. There might have been another. A child by another too, if I had lost the first. But mother and father both lost in the halls of death. No brother could ever spring to light again. For this law alone, I held you first in honour. For this... Creon, the king, judges me a criminal, guilty of dreadful outrage. My dear brother. And now he leads me off a captive in his hands, with no part in the bridal song, the bridal bed, denied all joy of marriage, raising children, deserted so by loved ones, struck by fate. I descend alive to the caverns of the dead. What law of mighty gods have I transgressed? Why look to the heavens any more, tormented as I am? Whom to call? What comrades now? Just think. My reverence only brands me for irreverence. Very well. If this is the pleasure of the gods, once I suffer, I will know that I was wrong. But if these men are wrong, let them suffer nothing worse than they meet out to me, these masters of injustice. Still the same rough winds, the wild passion raging through the girl. Take her away. You're wasting time. You'll pay for it too. Oh, God, the voice of death. It's come. It's here. True. Not a word of hope. Your doom is sealed. 
land of Thebes, city of all my fathers. Oh, you gods, the first gods of the race, they drag me away, now no more delay. Look on me, you noble sons of Thebes, the last of a great line of kings. I alone see what I suffer now at the hands of what breed of men? All reverence. All for my reverence. My reverence for the gods. Danny! Danny! Even she endured a fate like yours. In all her lovely strength, she traded the light of day for the bolted brazen vault buried within her tomb, her bridal chamber, wed to the yoke and broken. But she was of glorious birth, my child! My child! And treasured the seed of Zeus within her womb, a cloud burst streaming gold. Oh, the power of fate is a wonder, dark, terrible wonder. Neither wealth nor armies, towered walls nor ships, black hulls lashed by the salt can save us from that force. The yoke tamed him too, young Lycurgus, flaming in anger, king of Edonia, all for his mad taunts, Dionysus clamped him down, encased in the chain mail of rock, and there his rage, his terrible flowering rage burst, sobbing, dying away. At last, that madman came to know his god, the power he mocked, the power he taunted in all his frenzy, trying to stamp out the women strong with the god, the torch, the raving, sacred cries, enraging the muses who adored the flute. And far north, where the black rocks cut the sea in half, and murderous straits split the coast of Thrace, a forbidding city stands, where once, hard by the walls, the savage Ares thrill to watch her king's new queen, a fury rearing in rage against his two royal sons, her bloody hands, her dagger shuttled, stabbing out their eyes, cursed! Blinding wounds, their eyes blind sockets, screaming for revenge. They wailed in agony, cries echoing cries, the princes doomed at birth and their mother doomed to chains, walled up in a tomb of stone. But she traced her own birth back to a proud Athenian line and the high gods, and off in caverns half the world away, born of the wild north wind, she sprang on her father's gales, racing stallions up the leaping cliffs, child of the heavens, but even on her the fates, the grey everlasting Fates rode hard, my child, <laughs> my child. Lords of Thebes, I and the boy have come together, hand in hand, to see with the eyes of one, so the blind must go, with a guide to lead the way. What is it, old Tiresias? What news now? I will teach you, and you obey the seer. I will. I've never wavered from your advice before. And so you kept the city straight on course. I owe you a great deal, I swear to that. Well, then reflect, my son. You are poised once more on the razor edge of fate. What is it? I shudder to hear you. You will learn when you listen to the warnings of my craft. As I sat on the ancient seat of augury in the sanctuary where every bird I know will hover at my hands, suddenly I heard it. A strange voice in the wing beats, unintelligible, as barbaric, a mad scream. 
talons flashing, ripping. They were killing each other, that much I knew. The murderous fury whirring in those wings made that much clear. I was afraid. I turned quickly, tested the burnt sacrifice, ignited the altar at all points, but no fire. The god in the fire never blazed, not from those offerings. Over the embers slid a heavy ooze from the long thigh bones, smoking, sputtering out, and the bladder puffed and burst, spraying gall into the air. And the fat wrapping the bones slithered off and left them glistening white. No fire. The rites failed that might have blazed the future with a sign. So I learned from the boy here. He is my guide as I am guide to others. And it is you. Your high resolve that sets this plague on Thebes. The public altars and sacred hearths are fouled, one and all, by the birds and dogs, with carrion torn from the corpse, the doom-struck son of Oedipus. And so the gods are deaf to our prayers. They spurn the offerings in our hands, the flame of holy flesh. No birds cry out an omen clear and true. They're gorged with the murdered victim's blood and fat. Take these things to heart, my son. I warn you. All men make mistakes. It is only human. But once the wrong is done, a man can turn his back on folly. Misfortune too, if he tries to make amends, however low he's fallen, and stops his bull-necked ways. Stubbornness brands you for stupidity. Pride is a crime. No! Yield to the dead. Never stab the fighter when he's down. Where's the glory? Killing the dead twice over. I mean you well. I give you sound advice. It's best to learn from a good advisor when he speaks for your own good. It is pure Gain, old man, all of you. So, you shoot your arrows at my head like archers at the target. I even have him loosed on me, this fortune teller. Oh, his ilk has tried to sell me short and ship me off for years. Well, drive your bargains. Traffic much as you like in the gold of India, silver gold of Sardis. You'll never bury that body in the grave. Not even if Zeus's eagles rip the corpse and wing their rotten pickings off to the throne of God. Never, not even in fear of such defilement, will I tolerate his burial, that traitor. Well, I know we can't defile the gods. No mortal has the power. No, reverend old Tiresias, all men fall. It's only human, but the wisest fall obscenely when they glorify obscene advice with rhetoric all for their own gain. Oh, God, is there a man alive who knows, who actually believes? What now? What earth-shattering truth are you about to utter? Just how much a sense of judgment Wisdom is the greatest gift we have. Just, just as much, I'd say, as a twisted mind is the worst affliction known. You are the one who's sick, Creon, sick to death. I'm in no mood to trade insults with a seer. You have already, calling my prophecies a lie. Why not? You and the whole breed of seers are mad for money. And the whole race of tyrants lusts for filthy gain. This slander of yours, are you aware you're speaking to the king? Well aware. Who helped you save the city? You! 
You have your skills, old seer, but you lust for injustice. You will drive me to utter the dreadful secret in my heart. Well, spit it out! Just don't speak it out for profit. Profit? No. Not a bit of profit. Not for you. Well, no full well. You'll never buy off my resolve. Then know this too. Learn this by heart. The chariot of the sun will not race through so many circuits more before you have surrendered one boin of your own loins, your own flesh and blood. A corpse for corpses given in return. Since you have thrust to the world below, a child sprung for the world above, ruthlessly lodged a living soul within the grave, then you've robbed the gods below the earth, keeping a dead body here in the bright air, unburied, unsung, unhallowed by the rites. You, you have no business with the dead. Nor do the gods above. This is violence you have forced upon the heavens. And so the Avengers, the dark destroyers, late but true to the mark, now lie in wait for you. The furies sent by the gods and the god of death to strike you down with the pains that you perfected. There. Reflect on that. Tell me I've been bribed. The day comes soon, no long test of time, not now, when the morning cries for men and women break throughout your halls. Great hatred rises against you, cities in tumult, all whose mutilated sons the dogs have graced with burial, or the wild beasts are a wheeling crow that wings the ungodly stench of carrion back to each city, each warrior's hearth and home. These arrows for your heart, since you've raked me, I loose them like an archer in my anger. Arrows deadly true, you'll never escape their burning, searing force. Come, boy, take me home, so he can vent his rage on younger men and learn to keep a gentler tongue in his head and better sense than what he carries now. The old man's gone, my king. Terrible prophecies. Well, I know, since the hair on his old head went grey, he's never lied to Thebes. I know it myself. I'm shaken, torn. It's a dreadful thing to yield. Resist now, lay my pride bare to the blows of ruin. That's dreadful too. But good advice, Creon, take it now, you must. What should I do? Tell me, I'll obey. Go, free the girl from the rocky vault and raise a mound for the body you exposed. That's your advice? You think I should give in? Yes, my king, quickly. Disasters sent by the gods cut short our follies in a flash. Oh, oh, it's hard giving up the heart's desire. But I will do it. No more fighting a losing battle with necessity. Do it now. Go. Don't leave it to others. Now. I'm on my way. Come, each of you, take up axes. Make for the high ground. Over there, quickly. I and my better judgment have come round to this. I shackled her, I'll set her free myself. I am afraid. It's best to keep the established laws to the very day we die. God of a hundred names! Great Dionysus, son and glory of Semele, pride of Thebes, child of Zeus, who thunder rocks the clouds, lord of the famous lands of evening, king of the mysteries! King 
Queen of Eleusis, Demeter's plain, her breasting hills that welcome in the world. Great Dionysus! Bacchus, living in Thebes, the mother city of all your frenzied women! Bacchus, living among these menaces, rippling waters, standing over the field sown with the dragon's teeth. You! you. We have seen you through the smoky fires, your torches blazing over the twin peaks, where nymphs of the hollow cave climb onwards, fired with you, your sacred ray. We have seen you at Castalia's running spring and down from the heights of Nyssa, crowned with ivy, the greening shore, rioting vines and grapes. Down you come in your storm of wild women, ecstatic, mystic cries. Dionysus, down to watch and ward the road of Thebes, first of all cities. Thebes, you honour first you and your mother, bride of the lightning, come Dionysus. Now your people lie in the iron grip of plague. Come in your racing, healing stride down Parnassus slopes or across the moaning straits. Lord of the dancing, dance, dance the constellations breathing fire. Great master of the voices of the night, child of Zeus, God's offspring, come, come forth, Lord King, dance with your nymphs, swirling, raving arm in arm in frenzy through the night, they dance you, Eurcus. Dance, Dionysus, giver of all good things. <laughs> Neighbours, friends of the house of Cadmus and the kings, there's not a thing in this mortal life of ours I'd praise or blame as settled once for all. Fortune lifts and fortune fells the lucky and unlucky every day. No prophet on earth can tell a man his fate. Take Creon. There was a man to rouse your envy once, as I see it. He saved the realm from enemies, taking power, he alone, the lord of the fatherland. He set us true on course. He flourished like a tree with the noble line of sons he bred and reared. And now it's lost, all gone. Believe me, when a man has squandered his true joys, he's as good as dead, I tell you, a living corpse. Pile up the riches in your house as much as you like. Live like a king with a huge show of pomp. But if real delight is missing from the lot, I wouldn't give you a wisp of smoke for it. Not compared with joy. What now? What new grief do you bring to the house of kings? Dead. Dead. And the living are guilty of their death. Who's the murderer? Who is dead? Tell us. Haman's gone. His blood spilled by the very hand. His father's or his own? His own, raging mad with his father for the death. Oh, great seer, you saw it all. You brought your word to birth. Those are the facts. Deal with them as you will. Look, Eurydice, poor woman, Creon's wife. So close at hand, by chance, perhaps, unless she heard the news about her son. My countrymen, all of you, I caught the sound of your words as I was leaving to do my part, to appeal to Queen Athena with my prayers. I was just losing the balls, opening the doors, when a voice filled with sorrow, family sorrow, struck my ears, and I fell back terrified into the women's arms. Everything went black. Tell me the news again, whatever it is. Sorrow and I are hardly strangers. I can bear the worst. Aye, dear lady, I'll speak as an eyewitness. I was there, and I won't pass over one word of the truth. Why should I try to soothe you with a story only to prove a liar in a moment? Truth is always best. So I escorted your lord. I guided him to the edge of the plain where the body lay. 
Polynices, torn by the dogs and still unmourned, and saying a prayer to Hecate of the crossroads, Pluto too, to hold their anger and be kind. We washed the dead in a bath of holy water, and plucking some fresh branches, gathering what was left of him, we burned them all together and raised a high mound of native earth. And then we turned and made for that rocky vault of hers, the hollow empty bed of the bride of death. And far off, one of us heard a voice, a long wail rising, echoing out of that unhallowed wedding chamber. He ran to alert the master and Creon pressed on, closer. The strange inscrutable cry came sharper, throbbing around him now and he let loose a cry of his own, enough to wrench the heart. Oh God, am I the prophet now, going down the darkest road I've ever gone? My son, it's his dear voice, he greets me. Go, men, closer, quickly, go through the graps. The rocks are dragged back, right to the tomb's very mouth. And look, See if it's Haman's voice I think I hear, or the gods have robbed me of my senses. The king was shattered. We took his orders, went and searched, and there in the deepest, dark recesses of the tomb we found her, hanged by the neck in a fine linen noose, strangled in her veils, and the boy his arms flung around her waist, clinging to her, wailing for his bride, dead and down below for his father's crimes and the bed of his marriage blighted by misfortune. When Creon saw him, he gave a deep sob. He ran in shouting, crying out to him, Oh, my child, what have you done? What seized you? What insanity? What disaster drove you mad? Come out, my son. I beg you on my knees. But the boy gave him a wild burning glance, spat in his face, not a word in reply. He drew his sword. His father rushed out, running as Haman lunged and missed. And then, doomed, desperate with himself, suddenly leaning his full weight on the blade, he buried it in his body, halfway to the hilt. And still in his senses, pouring his arms around her, he embraced the girl and breathing hard, released a quick rush of blood, bright red on her cheek, glistening white. And there he lies, body enfolding body. He has won his bride at last, poor boy, not here, but in the house of the dead. Creon shows the world that of all the ills afflicting men, the worst is lack of judgment. What do you make of that? The lady's gone without a word, good or bad. I'm alarmed too, but here's my hope. Faced with her son's death, she finds it unbecoming to mourn in public. Inside, under her roof, she'll set her women to the task and wail the sorrow of the house. She's too discreet. She won't do something rash. I'm not so sure. To me, at least, a long, heavy silence promises danger, just as much as a lot of empty outcries. We'll see if she's holding something back, hiding some passion in her heart. I'm going in. You may be right, who knows? Even too much silence has its dangers. The king himself coming towards us. Look, he's holding the boy's head in his hands. Clear, damning proof, if it's right to say so. Proof of his own madness. No one else's, no, his own blind wrongs. Oh, ho, oh, oh. my crimes. So senseless, so insane. My stubborn, deadly. Look at us. The killer, the killed. Father and son. The same blood, oh, the misery, my plans, my mad fanatic heart, my son, cut off so young, dead, lost to the world, not through your stupidity, no, my own. Too late, too late, you see what justice means. Oh, I've learned through blood and tears. 
then it was then when the god came down and struck me a great weight shattering driving me down that wild savage path ruining trampling down my joy oh the agony the heart breaking agonies of our lives master what a hoard of grief you have and you'll have more the grief that lies to hand you've brought yourself the rest in the house you'll see it all too soon what now what's worse than this the queen is dead the mother of this dead boy mother to the end poor thing her wounds are fresh no no arbor of death so choked so hard to cleanse why me why are you killing me herald of pain more words more grief i died once you kill me again and again what's the report boy some news for me my wife dead oh dear god slaughter heaped on slaughter see for yourself now they bring her body from the palace oh no another a second loss to break the heart what next fate still waits for me i just held my son in my arms and now look a new corpse rising before my eyes a oh, wretched helpless mother oh my son she stabbed herself at the altar then her eyes went dark after she'd raised a cry for the noble fate of megarius the hero killed in the first assault then for haman then with her dying breath she called down torments on your head you killed her sons oh the dread i shudder with dread why not kill me too run me through with a good sharp sword oh god the misery anguish i'm i'm churning with it going under yes and the dead the woman lying there piles the guilt of all their deaths on you how did she end her life what bloody stroke she drove home to the heart with her own hand once she learned her son was dead that agony and the guilt is all mine can never be fixed on another man no escape for me i killed you i oh god help me i admit it all oh take me away quickly out of sight i don't even exist i am no one nothing good advice if there's any good in suffering quickest is best when troubles block the way oh come oh let it come the best of fates for me that brings the final day best fate of all oh quickly now oh so i never have to see another sunrise that will come when it comes we must deal with all that lies before us the future rests with the ones who tend the future oh, that prayer i poured my heart into that prayer no more prayers now for mortal men there is no escape from the doom we must endure oh take me away i beg of you out of sight a rash indiscriminate fool i murdered you my son against my will you too my wife a wailing wreck of a man whom to look to where to lean for support whatever i touch goes wrong once more a crushing fate has come down upon my head wisdom is by far the greatest part of joy and reverence towards the gods must be safeguarded the mighty words of the proud are paid in full with mighty blows of fate and at long last 
those blows will teach us wisdom. You've been listening to a Cena Monday Theatre production of Antigone by Sophocles from the Plays to Listen to series. Starring Anna Buckland as Antigone, Rupert Bates as Creon, Faye Morn and as many, Martin Prest as leader and chorus, David J. Keogh as chorus, Isaac Dayton as messenger and Haman, Will Bridges as Sentry and Tiresias, Cecilia Dorwin as Eurydice. Sound design and music by Will Bridges, directed by Cecilia Dorwin.